Hello, another business needs your help. The Davis Feed Mill needs 60,000 liters of silage to fill an order. Mow the grass around your property using the mowers, windrower and loading wagon and store the grass in your silage bunker. Once it ferments, deliver it to the Davis Feed Mill as soon as possible. You will be pleased to know the shop in town has started to lease equipment again to help other farmers. Use this to your advantage when aiding other farms. Good luck. Hello everybody, welcome back to Bucks County. This is episode number three in the Town Survival Series. All right, so you heard the lady. We've got our work cut out for us. We've got to uh, deliver 60,000 liters of silage to the Davis Feed Mill. But first, we've got to check our own crops. We've got our wheat growing here. The field still needs to be plowed. We have not done that yet, but we are going to get to that soon, I promise you. So we've got wheat that needs to be fertilized. We've got soybeans here that need to be harvested. That's good. So we can just throw that right into the silo and wait for someone to place an order for soybeans. And then we've got those there. Let's go up and check. I don't think, yeah, we still haven't figured out anything to plant in field number 15 here where the corn was. Uh, we did plow the field. You can see that there, all the nice little uh, plow lines. So we've still got to figure out something. I think maybe we'll just wait until someone orders something and then we can plant it there. Uh, we just need to go and check the canola out front. So we've got uh, we've got silage to do today. We've got to fertilize the wheat. We've got to harvest the soybeans. And with any luck, we will have to harvest the canola as well that is sitting out front. So we can again store that in the silo. Should any orders come up that need to be filled, we will be there to... Um, fill those orders so the good news is you heard the lady again the shop is now leasing equipment to other farmers so that's fantastic uh, we can also lease equipment we're just going to jump through the pen here we can also lease equipment from the shop too oh good canola is ready to harvest that's fantastic we will get to that as well so now that the shop is actually leasing equipment we don't have to use our own to aid the other farmers we can simply just uh, get the equipment from the shop and then we can uh, help out a lot more farmers that way it'll be a lot more feasible just to uh, use other people's equipment rather than wear and tear on our own so this is the grass field that is attached to our land there's a lot of grass here oh and there's the silage bunker so we're gonna mow some grass we are going to store it in the bunker and then we're going to ferment it will show you the process of uh, making silage if you've never made silage before and this is your first time ever diving into the silage world you're in for a whirlwind of excitement well not really it's just grass but uh, we'll get to that so we've got two mowers um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the larger John Deere tractor with the dualies here and uh, I'll show you a little trick that not a lot of people know about. When you have these uh, Pottinger mowers, uh, the front and the rear, you can actually attach them together. You can put the mowers together into one unit and put it right on the front and then tow the wind rower behind you so that you don't have to make an extra trip. We just have to move this smaller John Deere tractor out of the way first. Let's get that done and then we'll show you how to attach the mowers to the front of the tractor, the wind rower to the back of the tractor so that way we don't have to uh, make an extra trip and we can get this sort of done in a timely fashion i hope this tractor fits through this doorway here it does perfect all right so the mower that usually goes on the rear we're going to put that on first and that's going to attach to the front of the tractor and then the mower that usually goes on the front you're just going to attach it to the front of the rear mower now you do need somewhat of a heavy tractor you can see the back wheels sort of lifting up there a little bit when we change directions um, that's duly in part to these mowers are not meant to go on the front of a tractor they're meant to attach together on the back of a tractor but that's okay the weight problem will be solved once we hook the wind rower up to the back of the tractor whoops this has to be done very very carefully so the tractor doesn't tip forward um, the larger the tractor the heavier the tractor obviously and then you won't have that weight problem. This is uh, only present on small to medium tractors, some large tractors that don't have a lot of weight to it. There we go. So we are ready to mow the grass and wind row. And then all we have to do is pick it up with the loading wagon and then throw it into the silage bunker. So let's just drive over here to the grass field and we will get this done. 
So we need 60,000 liters of silage to fill this order. I'm not really sure how much grass we have to mow to get 60,000 liters. So I think we're just going to mow. Uh, we'll do one lap around the grass field and then pick it up at the loading wagon and dump it in the bunker. And then we'll see how much we have. And then we can determine how much more grass we need to cut in order to fill that 60,000 liter uh, order for the silage. Now it's not going to be ready today. We can prepare it, we can uh, compact it, we can start the fermentation process, but the silage will not be ready today. All we have to do is uh, collect it, store it, and then let it sit for a, a couple of days and then it will be ready to bring to the Davis feed mill. So there we go. We're going to lower both mowers, turn them on, lower the wind rower, unfold it, and then all you do is drive. So once we turn everything on, there we go, uh, front mowers are on, wind rower is wind rowing, and there we go. So now all you have to do is drive in somewhat of a semi-straight line and make sure that you wind row the grass that you're cutting. And now you're killing two birds with one stone, not having to do that extra trip with the wind rower, which is fantastic. You can also get the other uh, modded mowers that uh, wind row for you, that actually swath towards the center so that way you don't even need the wind rower. You can just run the baler or the loading wagon right behind it. Um, that's a, an example for another day, maybe. Let's just get all of this grass into the bunker, and then we'll see where we're at. All right, we've got the loading wagon. We're almost full. We just went one full lap around the yard. Not around the whole yard, but just around a portion of the yard. And we're just going to dump the grass into the silage bunker like so. And we're just going to spread it around a little bit, just so it's not all mountainous. It's hard to get a tractor over the mountains of grass if you don't sort of try and level it out a little bit. So it's not always good to just have one big mountain of grass in the middle of your silage bunker and then worry about it later. That's just going to cause you problems in trying to get the tractor to roll over top of it because we've got to compact it. So there is our first 23,000 liters of grass into the silage bunker um we've got to do what's uh, 60,000 liters so just to under three trucks so we'll do three full trailer loads um just to be safe that'll give us 69,000, and then we'll probably just store the remaining 10 we'll just leave it in the silage bunker until someone else needs it so let's get some more grass all right so this is our third loading wagon trip around the grass field and I think this might put us over the $60,000 uh, or $60,000 60,000 liter uh, order limit so let's just dump this into here uh, the circles were getting kind of smaller so we didn't have quite a full trailer for the third round so not quite 69,000 but uh, we can give the Davis feed mill a few extra thousand liters where we got there 62,000 all right so we're good so we should uh, not we don't have to cut any more grass. Um, we're not going to go crazy on the silage. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, 62,000. And all we have to do now is compact it, ferment it, wait for it to turn into silage. And then we can load it all up and bring it to the Davis feed mill. Haven't quite figured that part out yet. I think we're going to have to use uh, conveyor belts um, like we've used in the past. And then we'll just conveyor it into a trailer. Now that Demco trailer that we have will not hold silage. So we're going to have to lease a trailer uh, from the shop. Which is good timing because they just started leasing equipment back to people. So um, that's probably what we're going to have to do. But that's a problem for another day. Because the silage will take longer than today's episode to ferment. So let's get everything back in here. And then we will start working on our own farm. We will uh, notify the Davis Feed Mill, of course, that the uh, the order is in process and will be there probably uh, within the next episode or within a couple of days anyway. And then they don't have to worry about it. We got them covered with the silage order. So now all we have to do is compact the grass uh, to 100% compaction. And uh, the bunker tells you all of that. See, we're uh, just about 8% there, 9%. So basically... You're just going to roll back and forth over the grass until it's at 100%. And you're just going to flatten out all the mountains until it's a nice flat level pile of grass, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So we're going to roll back and forth across this. We'll catch up with you in a few minutes. And we are at 100% compaction. The hard part is now over. 
Um, all we gotta do is cover it, wait for it to ferment, and then we're done. So let's have a look at this here. There we go. Bunker covered, just like that. And now we can tend to the rest of the work that needs to be done around our farm. We just have to put all of this stuff back. All right, so we got everything just about put away. We just got to put these mowers back here. And then uh, what we're going to do is jump into the Rubicon fertilizer sprayer. Hopefully there's enough fertilizer. Whoops, we're going to hit the tether first. And then, uh, then we're going to get into the Rubicon. And then uh, oh, we're going to hit the post on the shed too. Jeez, got to be careful. All right, we're going to put this tractor back. And then we'll jump into the fertilizer sprayer. Hopefully there is enough fertilizer in there to take care of that yeah, semi-humongous wheat field there. Um, it's going to be hard to know what we fertilized and what we didn't because if you don't plow the field, then it doesn't register on the map that uh, shows you the spots that need to be fertilized. So as soon as we're done uh, harvesting this wheat when it's done growing, we are going to have to plow. That is a necessity. So we'll take care of that when that needs to be done. But that is first on the list for that humongous wheat field. For now, let's just get out there and fertilize as much as we can with as much as we can. And then uh, we'll worry about that later. So the next uh, few little jobs, yes, yeah, so we're going to fertilize the wheat, harvest the soybeans and canola, and then put the soybeans and the canola into the silo to wait for other businesses to fill orders or whatever. We'll put the word out that we have uh, soybeans and canola, however many thousands of liters this is going to generate. Uh, I don't know. So we'll wait till we're done, then we'll put the word out that we have uh, crops to sell. So if anyone has orders that need to be filled, then we can certainly fill them for us. For now, let's just uh, crank up the tunes and get this field fertilized. Well, that didn't take very long. Now we got the wheat all fertilized. All we have to do is harvest the canola and the soybeans. I think we'll do the canola first because it's the smaller of the two fields. And then we'll worry about that big field of soybeans. Uh, it's a good thing we have that high capacity harvester. If I haven't mentioned this before, this harvester that was given to us here on uh, Bucks County Farm um, has a capacity of 250,000 liters. Um, we will probably never have to empty this uh, in the middle of a harvest. We can just keep going and going and going, which is good because that's what we need to do. We're going to have to move that truck to uh, if we're going to dump the harvester into the silo. Let's worry about this first. We will uh, get the header and head on out to field number 26 now. This is a smaller field. It's not going to take that long, but... Uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about field number 26 here in the front. Uh, it does provide crops. It, it doesn't give us a lot of crops, but crops nonetheless. Um, I'm thinking we'll just keep it. Maybe we'll put something there that's low volume or, you know, once we get some more data and we figure out what farmers are in a lot of need of, maybe we can uh, 
I don't know. We'll figure something out to put in field number 26. It, like I said, it, it, it grows crops. It doesn't grow a lot of crops. So maybe we can put like a low volume crop there to, uh, to facilitate those needs. Who knows? We're still collecting a lot of data here in Bucks County. Right now we're just helping out uh, everyone get back up on their feet. So deciding on a crop rotation right now would be kind of futile as uh, we don't know what the needs of the county are at this point. Right now we're just trying to save everyone from going bankrupt. Um, so that's where we're at with Bucks County. So let's get all of this canola harvested and into the silo. All right, so here's the last little bit of canola. We are now done. There we go. So now we can just drive this over. We don't need to bring the tipper over here. We can just uh, pipe it right into the silo grate from here. I'm not sure if we're going to have to detach the header. I think we are. I don't think the header is going to fit through there while it's attached to the harvester. So we're going to have to detach that and then bring it on over to the silo. So let's get that done and out of the way. Maybe we can look at removing some of these trees to make things a little bit easier. But uh, right now we'll just make do with what we've got. Um, can't really afford any tree removal equipment right now. Uh, we do have $43,000 in the bank and we are strictly using that to help out the other farmers. It's technically not our money. It's, um, I don't really know who it belongs to, but we're just looking over the bank account just to make sure that we have enough to uh, fulfill any requests that may come in. I uh, haven't gotten any yet today, so that's good, um, except for the uh, Davis feed mill job that came directly from head office. So we will uh, take care of that when the time comes and uh, we're waiting for the silage to ferment. All right, so that truck is going to have to move, I think. I don't think we can get to the grate from here. Let's try that out anyway. I think maybe it's the, the pipe is too long. Yeah, I'm not going to fiddle around with this, and we're just going to move the truck. There we go. Let's get in the truck and get this out of the way. I'll just park it on the other side of the silo. It doesn't need to go that far. And there we go. It's a shame that this Demco trailer doesn't hold silage. I would hate to have to waste money uh, leasing another piece of equipment. Um, I don't think the loading wagon holds silage either there. It's automatically unloading now, and it's done. So now we can head on out to the soybeans and start harvesting the soybeans. Let's just do a quick little U-turn here. There we go. Perfect. And now this is probably going to take a while. Oh, we don't want to damage too much wheat. No, that's okay. It's in the second stage of growing, so I think we're okay. And there we go. Now we should be able to fit this entire field of soybeans into this harvester. Oops, hit the doghouse. We should be able to fit the entire field of soybeans into this harvester as it does have a crazy amount of capacity, 250,000 liters, which is uh, great because that helps us out quite a bit with not having to empty it out here, there, and everywhere. All right, so let's get this started. There we go. And... All right, we'll check back with you in a couple of hours when the soybeans are all done. And here is the last of the soybeans. As you can see with this harvester, with the ginormous capacity it has, we did fit the entire field into this one tank, which is great. I love that. Um, not having to stop to empty out the harvester every uh, few thousand liters certainly made things uh, a whole lot easier on us. So we did end up with, let's see, 51,000 liters of soybeans, uh, which is fantastic. That's going to make a nice addition to our silo of crops. Uh, we've got canola in there now. We're going to add the 50,000 liters of soybeans, and then we'll be ready if uh, any farmers or any businesses need uh, canola or soybean orders. Hopefully they don't need more than what we have because then we have to replant right away. But for now, I think we can uh, just leave this field the way it is. We will uh, uh, reseed at another point in time, maybe when we get another order, and then we can take that from there. So we're just going to dump this into the silo the same way we did the canola. We'll put some stuff away, and then I think we are going to wrap things up. I don't think there's much more we can do. Um, I do need to figure out what we can put on field number 15. 
Um, I don't want to guess. Uh, it's kind of making me anxious just having that bare field plowed with nothing in it. So um, I think the best decision is to wait, but I'm kind of getting antsy. Um, I want to plant something. I want to fertilize something, and I want to harvest something. Um, I think maybe the best thing is we'll just wait to see what the town needs, and then we'll go from there. All right, so we'll just leave the header right here. Right here. There we go. And then we'll park the harvester, and then I think we're going to put that John Deere tractor away. And then that's it. So thanks for stopping by Bucks County again today. This was episode number three into our town survival series. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like on the video, hit that subscribe button for me, and uh, ring that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we upload new content. We're not done by a long shot here in Bucks County. We've got a lot of work to do, so make sure you stay tuned and up to date. And we will see you later.